three, yeah, three female tradespeople. That's a disgrace. Right. Hmm. You know, like, yeah, I get but, that. But maybe they're, they're naturally drawn to it. Yeah, so I've got, I've got kids. Absolutely. And, um, you know, clearly I'm a, you know, except, a, but these, these kids happen to have gone completely that way. Hmm. One wants to f- make weapons. The other one wants to cut hair and... Bake uh, cakes. Bake cake, yeah, by, by seemingly by nature, straight out of the box. And um, but what, actually, would, what, what well, would you do if, if one of your, your children um, came to you and wanted to do something that was outside the realm of the realm of normality? Yeah, good, well, okay. you know, like what you like. Yep. Everybody wants the best for their son or daughter, and let's say their son come to you and said, "Hey, I want to do this," and it was outside the stereotypical, and I'll use the religion Christian box. What would you do? Yeah, I'll be honest. It would, it, it, it would worry me oh, only because uh, you, you think of um, work, like, uh, you know, as a parent, parent sort of thing. There's, um, there's all those little boxes that you that have to tick, You just yeah. hope that you just hope that these kids are going to be accepted. <coughs> Am I right? Yeah, yeah, and that's you know? the thing. Like, society is getting better. Yeah, I've just recently come back from Melbourne and I loved it. It wasn't so bloody cold, I'd moved down there. But, you know, I walked around Melbourne um, reasonably out there. No one cared. You know, the, the, the chicks in one of the high-end department stores, they come to me, they wanted to give me my own shopper, they introduced me to the male um, shop assistants who made their own clothes, um, the makeup people rallied around me. They were spectacular. It was acceptance. It was brilliance. The Gold Coast hasn't quite got there yet, but they're getting better. But Melbourne was good. It was really good. I, I liked it. And I think the world is getting better. I think, I think we are an understanding bunch now. You know, there is obviously I've got to pick and choose. I'm not going to w- walk into the, uh, you know. A, a yeah. Walk into a, a bikey bar in a pair of heels and a yeah. dress, you know, you end up with my teeth in my hand. But but in saying that, there's some of the gayest people ever. <laughs> like there was a guy in a, one of our race teams when we were racing sprint cars. There wasn't a time ever that we didn't. I, I always I always have this thought ever since I started. Like I said before, I started thinking about things because I only had a sister five years older than me. So now I'm doing a bit of jujitsu. It's weird to have to be wrestling with a bloke. It's actually it's something I had to come o- o- over. Cut mm. the Freudian <laughs> slip. <laughs> something I had to come over. No, <laughs> no. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like well, let's pull together. It won't so, take long. So, <laughs> <laughs> male interaction was something. You know, there was a guy in one of the teams who every time you took a piss, <laughs> he just stared straight at your cock while he was talking to you every time. <laughs> and, and isn't that jealousy? <laughs> I don't know, but in um, um, I've always thought there's that people have a percentage in them, you know. Like some some people you know are a percentage, you know they they're a percentage either way of of whatever they are. Absolutely, I think that you know, like I used to work in the nightclubs, and you watch people come and go. You know, I'm a great people watcher. I still am, and I always like to try and imagine the story or whether the story's true or not, and. Some of the some of the stories that that go through your head are exactly what you're saying. How much have you you know have you been in your wife's closet or have you have you thought about this or have you thought about that? You know, you know my you know my little head's twisted and warped. But some of the stories and some of these people are, are spectacular ideas. You know, so that what got me was there was a I got invited to uh, a cross-dressing party recently. I didn't go because I I, I sort of half took offence to it because... Was that the name of it, by the way? Was that cross-dressing party? Yeah. It was, yeah. Okay, good. It was. It was was branded as a cross-dressing party. And what got me was when the host told me that all of his male mates were right into it and they were buying this and they were buying that, and I'm thinking there's a whole lot of frustrated cross-dressing people there. And it breaks your heart, you know, like amongst, let's say there's 
there's a hundred of them go to the, the, the go to this party. There's a there'd be a bunch of them that actually want to be transgender or or, or, or whatever, you know. Yeah. So it it it's a shit deal for a lot of people, you know, to try and hide this deal. So yeah, sorry, I dressed <laughs> up. Remember, I, for Mike's party, I. Dr- I dressed up like a woman and I just looked like Hulk Hogan or Jimmy Savile. <laughs> it was the worst thing you've ever seen. You've got to have a shave first, mate. No, oh, no, no. I had a shave, but I just had this huge shower. You know, and that's, and what, that's what a friend of mine says. She's, too funny. Got, she's got some transgender friends who are on the hormones the same as me, but they complain that they're hairy. Like, what woman in this world don't you know that plucks, preens, waxes, strips, yeah, right. shaves, whatever? Yeah. These people thought that estrogen would turn them into Pamela Anderson. Oh, like, wow, what is wrong with these people? Yeah, like, how, when do you ever see a woman uh, fully natural? No, you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my girlfriend cost me more than my race car. <laughs> <laughs> Nails, waxing, hair, makeup, goddamn. <laughs> it's cheaper to run a car. <laughs> How did you get into drag racing? Uh, how did I get into drag racing? It, it, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I, I think I fell into it. I fell into it. Um, in Australia or did you have any connection? No, no, in Australia. I, I, the first car I helped was a guy named Peter Gratz. Um, That's a big he, name. Yeah, he had the Valvoline 57 show. Yeah. He was a great guy. He, um, he helped me out a fair bit and, you know, he'd had a big, big fire um, before I met him, and I was tasked to rewire the vehicle because that's what I do. And from then, I just ended up helping him out, and I've just moved through the ranks. And I think it's 20 years later, I'm finally starting to get something right, I guess. So, but Peter's a great guy. He helped me out. I've had a lot of a lot of big names help me all the way through the the journey. Um, I ended up managing one of the biggest teams in the Southern Hemisphere. We had 65 race day crew which is a, a, a job in its own when you've got 65 people on a, on a radio in your ear asking you questions at once. You, oh, wow. Well. No, yeah. What team? Um, that was for Brett Stevens Racing, Jack Daniels. So. Big sponsor. A big alcohol sponsor. Back in the day before, oh, I'm guessing, I'm guessing, mm-hmm. but I remember uh, racing at Indy yeah. and the, the Brett Stevens drag car was always... You you may have been there. We were, I was there. Maybe yeah. the year two thousand or something. I was there from the start. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And talk about money. Like, there's a lot to get of an alcohol sponsorship because we were in sprint cars at the time. And the money, the, the sponsorship, I wasn't entirely privy to. Yeah. Um, but I know it wasn't as much as people thought. Okay. Um, but he made it work. You know, he's done some things in the past that are. That are not quite legal, I guess. He's in prison for it. Yeah. I had a great friendship with Brett. I really did have a great friendship with Brett. We we did some spectacular things, and he taught me a lot. And, and some of his crew guys taught me a lot. Um, it was spectacular. Spectacular. Great fun. I mean, you'd know what it's like after the public leave a race meeting and everybody's letting their hair down and having a few drinks. Some of the stuff we did together was so hilarious. Yeah. Absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Um, but team stuff is so good. Isn't it weird when you leave a team and then come back to the track and you you aren't in a team? You are. It's a strange feeling. It's um. It's like what am I doing? No one really. It, it, it's like not being the cool kid in school anymore. Yeah. You know, you've just been. You know, you're the last guy to be picked. Yeah. You know, it's 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 dodgeball and you're the guy on the floor. Yep. I found that in commentary when I went from from racing sprint cars I was instantly asked to do commentary and here I am all kind of sucking up <laughs> to guys that I hate or you know or the I put the wall up to only six months before yeah, now we, I'm putting the mic in their face going oh and not only that I was dead alone in the pit pits because mm. it was just you, you want to hang out in one truck you know I've got some really cool like a, a, a quick story with the, the race team that I have now. I, I race for John Sting um, Racing. We had an issue at, at a winter nationals where we, we'd hurt the car pretty good. And we didn't get the parts back to quite late in the day. And 
by the time we wanted to start the car up, it was late and it was night and dark. So the the pit's in darkness. We had just the lights with the generator going, and we started the car up. And we had our usual, you know, you know, fifty to a hundred people at the front watching the watching this whole proceedings going. And one of them kicked the lead out of the out of the generator. So instantly we are in darkness, absolute darkness. And this particular team that I work for now. There wasn't a word said. There was no yelling. There was no screaming. There was no urgency. There was nothing. They all reached for their phones, torches, lights, whatever they had, and we continued on what we had to do quietly and efficiently, and I've never had a team do that in my life. It was spectacular. There's a guy, Simon Stewart. He's my car chief. He, he, he runs the car for me. Without that, without Simon on that team, I couldn't do it. He's a man mountain. He is brilliant. But without him on that team, I couldn't do it. And there's always that one guy on the team that everybody counts on, and he's it. You know, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. So, but yeah, I get what you say about the uh, the team deal. You know, like when you're not on a team, you like I can't go to the drag racing if I'm not racing. You just feel weird. Yeah. Which is big coming from me with a set of tits and fucking high heels. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm having a blast. <laughs> you, need it, buy, you need to buy me another drink before <laughs> that happens. <laughs> is it all right to call you mate? Here's, here's, here's the you thing. That, that, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. You're such a... Um, when I say... What I was getting at with You're being six foot tall. Bloke. <laughs> yeah, well, like, and, that, and that's the and thing. I though, didn't like, finish my thing. Sorry, I didn't finish my thing with your hormones. Now it's a year later. Yeah, you're getting a body. You're, you're, mm. You've got you're getting, you've got the the shape is there. Like you said to me, said you know you you it's back on the um, the hormones, the hormones. Because yeah. a year ago you you stopped them and you're back on. You're like whoa, you can physically you know, see this uh, the, like shape thing. transfer. But you still, if I can be honest, and I'm not talking appearance or anything. I'm still talking to that great person. You know, like, it's, there's no and, bullshit about you. That's what I mean. You know, what I'd like to say is, and, and, and people, um, you know, people get hung up. I've been out with some of the most beautiful girls in the world. Modestly, of course. There's no mirrors in my house. I'm f- ugly as sin, but... Come on, can you stop saying that? Oh, Have you looked yeah, at my yeah. head? <laughs> if, look, look at it greasy. Jesus Well, Christ. you've got a good head for radio, but anyway... <laughs> I feel sorry for women. How do they even, you know? Oh, well, yeah, I don't know how they do it. But, but, you know, like, you can have the most beautiful woman in the world, but if she's got a, 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 an ugly nature or, or she's, she's not a, a nice person, that ugly comes through. Or fake. Fake. I fake. hate fake. Welcome to the Gold Coast. Mm. Mind you, it's big for me. I've got fake eyelashes. fake amongst and... their friends. You know how that women have those... Um, I have been in general. But women do this... Um, this uh, fakeness between themselves, and it's a completely different, absolutely different they're, way. That's what I'm talking, the, chewing in the mic, but they are, yeah, they're as fake as they come. You know, like I, I know some girls that, uh, you know, they put on this big show, and, and I remember years ago, my ex-wife, and you know my ex-wife, but she had a friend that would wake up at four in the morning and put her makeup on, so when her partner woke up, she was had a full face on. She never took her makeup off. Wow. I knew this story back to front. I mean, not. Yeah, like who does that? Well, what the I was with a. Fuck is wrong with I you? I was with someone for th- well, more than maybe six months where they they, was, they locked the bed, bathroom door. And when I finally saw her face, it was so pale. Well, she was a bit of a gothic. Hmm. But I could not believe. <laughs> I, I actually felt ripped off. You she know? was a bloke, wasn't she? And was she a bloke? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and when I say fake, if anyone listens to this, like, you know. I don't mean it like that. I mean more like, um, and, and blokes are liars, and we we you know do all sorts of horrible things. But there's a certain way of females can communicate with each other. I love your shoes and all that sort of stuff is what I mean. Mm. That when you find when you, yourself with a um, someone who does that a lot, and you're like, oh my god, I can't bear this. You know, it's a it's different, completely I, different. I, sorry, but I guess it's 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 more about you know like I don't change my voice. I don't change too much because it's not me. One of the questions a psychologist asks you, uh, they try and trick you, and they said, well, what can you, what do you imagine yourself being in 12 months' time? 
And the answer I gave him was me sitting on a lounge. Uh, sorry, what was the, the question was, what was your perfect?